Well, hello, everyone. I'm Dr. Shelley Plum, and welcome to Straight Talk. It's a great day, a great day to talk straight about issues that affect us all. You see, it's our mission to bring issues to light, to get people talking, to get people talking about things that they may want to know more about but are afraid to talk about, to get those things that have been brushed under the carpet for far too long and get them out into the open so they can be dealt with effectively. What we find is that individuals that speak with like-minded individuals and better yet have the resources to better understand themselves and their world, they're in a better position to discover or rediscover their unique purpose in life. And here's the kicker, feel fantastic doing it. When's the last time you felt fantastic? We find that a person that feels good about who they are in here, they shine. And it's that illumination that really lights up the world. And that is what it's all about. We are here today to talk about myths. We're here to talk about medical myths, to be exact. We are bombarded daily with information. It's hard to know really what to believe. For example, I was at the nutrition store the other day and I had a headache and I'm looking at all the medication that is there on the counter. Some of them saying it takes away the pain. Some say it'll improve your memory. Some say it'll help cognitive decline. What are we supposed to believe? It is really very difficult. Do we, is it health or is it hype? Uh, the media does not make it any better, do they? I mean, we're bombarded with information from start to finish. Something We're bombarded with things like, do vaccines cause autism? Or does uh, cold weather make us sick? And my son's favorite is, does chewing gum actually stain your stomach for seven years? So we're bombarded with daily information. We must, as consumers, be aware. We must challenge ourselves to a higher standard. So we are here today to talk about medical myths. Quite frankly, we are like sculptors. When I think of sculptors, I think of Michelangelo. He says this, every block of stone has a statue in it. It is the task of the sculptor to discover it. With regards to medical myths, with regards to our health, we are very much like sculptors. We stand before each other as blocks of stone burdened by layers of medical myths. We must be aware. We must challenge ourselves to a higher standard and together whittle away at those medical myths and uncover that statue or that healthy you. So what we've done here at Plum Talk, if we, we have looked at a variety of information and quite frankly, there are a lot of medical myths that are out there. We have narrowed it down to three very popular myths that baffle, quite frankly, millions of Americans, actually millions of people worldwide. Today, we are going to talk about headaches, we are going to talk about memory loss, and we are going to talk about brain-boosting foods. So when we come back, we will explore medical myth number one, chiropractic adjustment is ineffective for long-term headache relief. Join us in a moment. Well, we're back to explore medical myth number one. Chiropractic adjustment is ineffective for long-term headache relief. I'll be the first to admit that in the medical community and in the general population, chiropractic work is often, it's not often thought of as first-line therapy for headaches. I often wonder about headaches in general because I suffer from headaches. You know, as a nation, as a, a person in the world, are we over-medicated with regards to, to headaches? I ask that question because every time I get a headache, I think, well, you know, I'm going to pop a Motrin. I'm going to get rid of it. But I don't always think to get to the root of the problem. What is actually causing the headaches? You know, there are people out there that are taking even stronger medications for headaches, and those medications oftentimes have side effects. So the ultimate question today, I think we need to ask ourselves, with regards to headaches, are we putting a Band-Aid over it? Or are we treating the symptoms? Are we getting to the root of the problem? To help us explore medical myth number one, we are fortunate to have a licensed chiropractor with us. 
We have Dr. Randy Lorish. Dr. Randy is the founder of the Wellness Experience in Wellington, Florida. I can tell you in South Florida, he is well known for taking a well-rounded approach to health and wellness. He is known to get to the root of the problem with regards to headaches. So please join me in welcoming Dr. Randy Lorish. Well, hello, Dr. Randy, how are you? I'm great, thank great. you. Great, would you like to take a seat please. here? Well, first of all, I would like to welcome you. Thank you. I, I've had the distinct privilege to get to know you, I mean, even better over the last six months, and I'm very impressed with your website. You know, two things that really jumped out at me is that you are, like we were telling our guests, known for having a well-rounded approach in your practice. Can you share with our guests maybe what that means and how you're different from other practitioners? I would say that the way that we look at things is from a whole body approach, um, but mainly from the nervous system and how the nervous system responds overall. If we look at the nervous system and we realize that it controls and coordinates every system in the body, right. then we take a whole body approach, basically, right. a well-rounded approach. Um, and I think in dealing with that and, and recommending to patients different other, other alternatives or other therapies that we actually offer in our office, that's a way to look at the whole body as well. That makes sense. And while you're talking, you know what I'm thinking about? I'm thinking about my oldest son putting together a Lego project. And if you take one piece of Lego, uh, it really, and focus on that, you're not going to accomplish the whole thing. And when I was asking him, what, why are you putting that piece there? He says, well, look at the whole picture, Mom. So really, to get to the root of the problem, you do have to look at it as a whole. Am I right? You do. Oh. You do. But you also have to look at the pieces as well, like Absolutely. your son has. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. So headaches. We're here to talk about headaches. And um, do you, in your practice, have you noticed the incidence of headaches increasing in today's society or not? Definitely. I think there's a great increase. And uh, one, of those, one of the reasons behind that is the stress that we're under and also the technology that we're subjected to. Right. Um, that, just that blue light, as they call it, that, that um, emits from all our different uh, devices, the, the TV, you know, all the electromagnetic radiation that's around us, I think that that really provides somewhat of a way f to induce headaches. The stress. Our children are under great stress oh, they now. they are. Yes. So much more than ever before. Right. Um, and, and I do think it's our society that's just speeding up. And I think sometimes our brains aren't, some of our brains aren't ready for that speed, you know? So. You no, know, I definitely agree with that. Absolutely. I mean, I could speak from my standpoint. I, you know, I work a lot at the computer, and my, I'm hunched over, and my, my neck is tense, and I have a tension headache at the, the end of the day. Definitely. Actually, that brings up a good point. There are many types of headaches, aren't they? There are so many types and, of headaches. And one that actually you turned me on to is related, that's often misdiagnosed, I'm finding, is related to nerve impingement. So yes. I know you have your friend over there, right? We do, we do. Uh, I, I was wondering, for our guests, would you demonstrate uh, what happens when we get that type of headache? We call it a cervicogenic headache and, or a, a neck-related headache. So when the nerve is pinched in the, the uh, top of the neck, right up here, mm -hmm. that nerve can go back up into the back of the head and affect the rest, basically the brain and how the brain responds to different stresses. Right. If that nerve is pinched by the bone, then the impulse isn't getting through the way that it needs to. Okay. What we do as chiropractors is we find where that impingement is and we correct it. And there's so many different ways to correct that impingement. Right. So, so there, there are ways of dealing with that. There are ways of dealing with the cervicogenic headaches. Right, right. It's interesting information. I was doing a little research on headaches, and you've heard, I'm sure, of the World Health Organization. Yes. I, in October of 2012, they had a fact sheet that they put out with regards to headache, and some of the facts they reported was astounding to me. Uh, one is that headaches are the most common nerve disorder. Did you know that? Uh, yes, yeah, of and, course. And 47% and of not the nation, but the world's population suffers from headache disorders. And of those people, only a minority, a minority is, are actually diagnosed properly by a healthcare professional. So 
my question to you is this, with regards to this type of headache that you just described to us, how many people come into your office, have this diagnosis, but have been treated by other healthcare professionals and even put on stronger medicines when they didn't need it? I see a tremendous amount of people that come in that have been misdiagnosed, or there's no diagnosis at all. They might have went for an MRI, a CAT scan, something to really evaluate them, and they're just put on a med because th they don't see anything on an MRI, a CAT scan. Now, those are great tests right. and a great way for us to learn more information. However, if you don't find something, why medicate? Why not try the alternative? Why not seek another way? Or my, why isn't chiropractic the first line of defense like you spoke of? So I'm curious, uh, with regards to medical myth number one is chiropractic adjustment, is it effective in long-term headache relief? Can you share with our guests maybe some statistics or any facts that you have that do support that? There was a study that was done in Australia by the Journal of Manipulative and Therapeutic um, Medicine that basically showed that migraine headaches um, were actually changed by a chiropractic adjustment. And the study showed that 20% of the people that were actually studied um, actually showed tremendous amount of improvement. The other 50% only showed 90% improvement, which that's pretty considerable. Right, um, right, absolutely. So that would mean that if 30 million people suffer from headaches or migraine headaches across the world, that 6.6% um, would actually get improvement from chiropractic care. That's right. pretty significant. Oh, it is. It is, most definitely. I think the bottom line is this, is that like we were talking about before is we have to be aware. Uh, we have to make sure that we're getting to the root of the problem and not just treating the symptoms, don't you think? Causation is the biggest thing. Yes. And finding the cause, finding the symptomology. It's kind of interesting too, um, from a podiatry standpoint, yes. because you are a podiatrist. Yes. <laughs> I had a patient that came to my office years and years ago, and she said every time my shoes would wear out, yes. she would start with a headache. Oh, that's interesting. How interesting. Yeah, but right. it would change her gait, and it would cause a headache because everything else was off. Her spine was thrown off, but she had a subluxated vertebra, that misaligned vertebra that was causing the headache as a result of everything being um, out of kilter, uh, Yeah, out of yeah, alignment, out right? out of alignment, yes. Okay. So, Dr. Randy, uh, the moment of truth. Uh, I would, uh, it, it would help me, and I know it would help a lot of the guests that are out there. What are some hard take-home tips that you can give them to prevent future headaches or even headaches on a daily basis? I would say, you know, we always talk about the five facets of health. Um, properly functioning nervous system. That's something that we do as chiropractors, but you can't do that at home. Mm -hmm. So positive mental attitude, meditation, prayer, one of those things as a part of that relaxation method. Right. Uh, stress reduction. Get up from your seat at work you know, try to relax yourself as best that you can. Properly, proper uh, sleep. Um, most people don't get a good night's sleep, but it might be your pillow, it might be your mattress, there might be something that you're doing wrong in your sleep. Monitor your sleep. There's so many different gadgets and gizmos out there now that can help you monitor your sleep. Right. Um, and then also just making sure that you're exercising and eating properly. You know, if you're eating the wrong foods, mm -hmm. they can definitely cause headaches. You know, inflammatory issues are so prevalent nowadays because of a whole nother topic that we could get into, <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> but because we're not eating properly. That's true. And, yeah. uh, and then, again, exercise. A lot of times when people have headaches, they don't feel like exercising, but it brings oxygen to their body. It, it, it gives them vitality. It, it, it helps so much. And it's just something that we need to do, whether it's a walk with your kids or or, you know, cleaning the house, or it, it's just the simple things that you do that can help you relax. Absolutely. And also life enjoyment. And yes. I know that's something that Plum Talk stands for, and uh, we stand for at the Wellness Experience, that you have to enjoy your life. You have to, on a, on a day like today, the day right. of happiness, you have to realize how important it is to, to exude that, that positivity. Absolutely. And you know what I'm hearing from you right now? 
I'm hearing that whole Bonnie approach coming right at me, <laughs> right? Yeah, because that is definitely very important. So I would like to take uh, this opportunity really to thank you for being with us today. And uh, if any of you would like to contact Dr. Randy, we have put his contact information up on the screen. So feel free to, to contact him if you have any questions about what we spoke about today. When we come back, we will investigate medical myth number two. Cognitive decline and memory loss are a normal part of aging. Stay tuned. We are back to talk about medical myth number two. Memory loss and cognitive decline are a normal part of aging. You know, we all forget things. I will be the first to admit that I forget things every single day. Case in point is I forget my cell phone every day, sometimes multiple times a day. I have a love-hate relationship with that phone. My, my office, it's actually a joke in my office. The other, two months ago, I found my cell phone, and you know where it was? It was in the refrigerator, which was highly embarrassing, and we still laugh about it to this day. I do remember at the time, when I left it in the refrigerator, I was thinking, oh, this is a normal part of aging. I'm getting older. And, you know, thinking that forgetting things as I grow older is normal. But we have to ask ourselves, is it really normal? What if it's a sign of something that a medical condition, a medical condition that can be easily prevented? We struggled with that problem at Plum Talk, and we found an expert in the subject. We found Dr. Kim Crawford. Dr. Crawford, for those of you not familiar with her, she is certified in internal medicine and sports medicine. What's more is she has a special board certification in anti-aging and regenerative medicine. And what is special about Dr. Kim is she does not agree. She does not think that cognitive decline and memory loss has to be a normal part of aging. In talking with her and conferring and, and, and reading her information, there were some shocking things that, that jumped out at me. Did you know that after the age of 30, our IQs drop three to five points for every decade? Every decade after 30, our IQ drops. It's incredible. Did you know that According to Dr. Kim, 90% of all Alzheimer's cases can probably be prevented. She has really, she's very, very passionate about that subject. She's had family members go through some things uh, related to that, so she's very passionate about it. Looking into it, I found that there is a lot of information on that. In fact, in psychologicalscience.org, they had an article where they talk about some functions of our brain that can actually increase as we age. They did report in one of the articles that in the past, behavioral scientists, they, they really did think that uh, cognitive decline was inevitable and memory loss was inevitable as we age, that there was really nothing we could do about it. But Dr. Kim does not agree with that. She says that there is definitely, definitely something that we can do about. So we set out and we asked Dr. Kim some really tough questions. We asked her, how can we reverse our IQ? If our, our IQ is declining, how can we turn that around? We also asked her pointed questions about memory loss. If we're finding that we're forgetting things more frequently, is there anything we can do to bring that up? More importantly, we asked her a tough question about what we call ancillary conditions. Are there conditions that we're disregarding as normal part of aging, which actually can be a condition that can be easily treated? We really need to know about these things. Her answers to our questions, quite frankly, were riveting, very, very inspiring. And we asked her to put these thoughts, her thoughts, her recommendations on video. Take a look at this. Hi Shelly and hi everyone. It's wonderful to be here with you today. I'm Dr. Kim Crawford and you know what that first question was just excellent because there are so many really just ridiculous medical myths out there and I'll just name a couple of other ones. You're getting older so your energy goes down nothing you can do about it. Myth, um, you're getting older 
So you can't sleep through the night. Nothing we can do about it other than a sleeping pill. Myth. And the one I hate because I just love brains is you're getting older and your memory's going to fade and it's just normal part of aging. Nothing we can do about it. Myth. There are so many components to memory consolidation, memory storage, IQ, cognition, mood, all based on neurotransmitters and all things that we absolutely can help with in my you know, in my subspecialty, which is anti-aging medicine. Um, it is not true that there's nothing you can do about it, but it is true, for instance, that we do lose about three IQ points per decade after age 30. Now, we can do some things that stimulate neural stem cells to form new neurons, because of course, as we, as we age, some neurons die off. We can do that. We can sharpen up concentration because that does indeed, um, you know, tail off a little bit. We can increase memory consolidation and storage in the little organ called the hippocampus, um, which is what diminishes in size unless we do something about it as we age. There are so many myths that doctors propagate to people as they age and they tell them, oh, this is just normal. This is what happens as you age. You know, the aches and pains, the inability to sleep, the drop in energy, all of these things that can be fixed. One of the real myths is that, oh, your brain is just gonna deteriorate. Your memory is just gonna, gonna fade. It's just part of the aging process and there's really nothing we can do about it. And there's nothing that could be farther from the truth. Uh, in fact, there are many things that we can do about it, and we're going to get to that in another part of this uh, interview. Um, but no, your brain does not have to, you know, just uh, just age and wither away, and you're, you know, some doddering, dot, doddering little idiot as you get older. That absolutely doesn't have to happen. Um, there are many things we can do to intervene, and um, just for anybody who is reaching middle age and walks into a room and can't remember why they walked into the room. That happens, but you know what? We can reverse that. You know, it's really scary how many people are diagnosed with having dementia that is not treatable when there are a well-known list of treatable causes of dementia. And yes, I have run into this. One of them was with my own 90-year-old father, who I was told, you know, always having cognitive decline, which I, of course, noticed. And somebody got thyroid function tests, but they didn't get the right fun thyroid function tests. I ordered the right thyroid function tests. And indeed, my dad was hypothyroid and I treated him. His cognition is fine. So it's more often that um, something is missed than something is misdiagnosed and the wrong medication is given. Um, another example, B12 deficiency. That can cause dementia. That's treatable. Um, when somebody's taking benzodiazepines, you know, things like um, uh, Xanax, Valium, Clonopin, that can actually lead to cognitive decline. So, of course, the treatment for that would be to wean the people off of those medications. Now, the one thing I have seen where, quote, something is prescribed is depression can present as memory loss and mild dementia, and uh, that can be missed. You bet I can give you some concrete take-home tips and I can tell you where to go for some other good resources. Um, let's talk about just some of the basics. Diet. If you're eating an inflammatory diet, and if you don't know what an inflammatory diet is, I'm just going to give you some basics. Um, fast food, processed food, food with a lot of starch, food with sugar, that's inflammatory. Um, if you go to my blog on my website, which I'll mention at the end, um, I have lots of articles. I, I think I have one in particular that will give you an anti-inflammatory diet. So that's number one. Uh, number two, it's been long proven that increased cerebral blood flow, which happens when you exercise, um, definitely staves off dementia. Um, there are supplements which are very well known to be neuroprotective, um, things like curcumin and fish oil. And when we talk about brain supplementation, there's actually many things that we do and, and I do in my practice and through my website. We can stimulate neural stem cells to form new neurons because as we age, we lose brain cells. We can increase the cognition transit time so that 
um, so that we get that, you know, we get that sharpness back. We can increase concentration. We can increase memory storage. There's many things we can do. Um, so, but you know, you start off with diet and exercise um, and you want to normalize your weight. Um, so those are the biggest take home tips. Um, and uh, if you'd like more information, you can actually get a free five part series uh, on brain health at my website, www.drkimsagewellsolutions.com. Take care and goodbye. Wow, inspiring information. It's definitely groundbreaking information. So our myth is cognitive decline and memory loss a normal part of aging? Well, according to Dr. Kim, it does not have to be. There's something that we can do about it. There is something we can do to help our brains be healthier. There is something that we can do to prevent memory loss. It is really, really a beautiful thing. Well, we are back to explore medical myth number three. There is no such thing as brain-boosting food. You know, a lot of people still think that, that there is no such thing, despite the literature. You know, we in today's society are busy. It's go, go, go all the time, and we barely have time to sit down, let alone plan a nutritious meal. But I think we'll all agree that when we don't eat the proper nutrition, we definitely suffer from the health consequences. In fact, I was surprised with the research. There is actually research out there that shows that it's affecting our youth. Uh, there was a, US, a USA Today article that basically stated that in 2012, a third, a third of our nation's youth was overweight or, or obese. I mean, it's extraordinary statistics. One of the hot topics that are out there right now is what we're about to talk about today, and that's brain-boosting foods. Do foods help us increase our focus, increase our memory, increase our intelligence? There is a lot of literature out there that supports that it does. In fact, the USDA has a, a very unique statement that I'd like to share for you. I'm going to pop it up on the screen here. They state that scientists know that certain nutrients and other key chemical compounds are essential to human brain function. Serious deficiencies in some of these, such as vitamin B12 and iron, can lead to impaired cognitive function due to neurological or nerve fiber complications. So, it seems that there is a real connection between food and proper brain function. There's actually a pathway between that, and I will be the first to admit, and I'm sure you'll concur with me, that that path can be confusing. It can be very difficult to navigate. So what we have done here at Plum Talk is we have found an expert in the field, an expert that is going to help us navigate that pathway. We have found Alina Z. Alina, I am proud to report, is an award-winning board-certified health coach. She's actually a chef, a detox specialist, and she is the winner of the number one diet in Harper Bazaar magazine. Very exciting. Please join me in welcoming Alina Z. Hi, Alina. How are Hi. you? Thanks for joining us. Can we have a seat? So good to be here. Oh, it, it is nice to have you. And I have to tell you, uh, you are such an inspiration to others. I have uh, known people who have known you and, and really benefited from your work. You know, one thing that really pops out at me that I would love for you to share with our guests here is on your website, you say something that is very intriguing. You say that picking out a healthy diet is very similar, and as a woman, this is important to me, very similar to choosing the fashion in our closet. So what do you mean by that? So I created a term called couture nutrition, and people are familiar with what couture and fashion means, meaning it has to fit your bioindividuality, your personality, your lifestyle. And I believe that's what we need to think about when we're picking out foods. Right. For example, foods that fit me in the middle of the summer in Florida are not going to be the same foods that fit me in the middle of the winter in Boston. And also foods that fit me might not fit a 200 pound man. So everyone needs to think about what it is that makes them feel good, makes them feel comfortable. 
And if you think about even shoes, like you wouldn't wear in shoes that hurt you unless they looked really pretty and you only wore them for a little while. Right. But you wouldn't be walking for 10 miles every day if you had shoes at heart, you'd be wearing sneakers, right? right? Exactly. So the same with food. Sometimes we eat food that doesn't fit us, that hurts us. You know, aches and pains that people feel, and they think, "Well, I should take this medicine from heartburn," right? Because the food hurt them. Instead of thinking, "Maybe I should change my food because my food doesn't fit me." That makes a lot of sense. It does. So finding food that fits you makes you feel great during the meal and after and not settling for less and really thinking and listening to your body feeling how does it feel to eat this do i feel excited do i feel energized right do i feel that way only for five minutes or do i feel like that's the whole day right exactly and in what's coming to my mind while you're talking is it, it's like with with a, a a shirt for example a one size fit all doesn't necessarily fit you exactly. so the same thing applies to food am i right exactly and also when you think about shirts that are one size fits all they're not really good looking. No, Most they're not. The time. No, and they don't make you feel good about no, you. No, they don't. Yeah. They don't. So finding foods that fits you and also couture is usually made with really good fabrics. You have 100% cotton or silk. You don't really have polyester or acrylic that's itchy. Right. So finding foods that are natural, created out of natural products like, you know, fruits and vegetables and high quality ingredients versus food-like substances right. that are not really foods. They're not foods. That's absolutely right. So as you know, we are here to talk about brain-boosting foods, and I know that you're a firm supporter of that. So what I'd like to do, if it's okay with you, I would like to look at some of the common brain-boosting foods and see what you think about them and maybe share some of the information or your knowledge. Sure. Uh, let's start with, how about blueberries? Blueberries, I love blueberries, and I have to tell you what I do, and my, my kids and I, we actually freeze the blueberries, and it's almost like a little treat for them, and they love it. So blueberries, I read, are supposed to increase focus somehow, and it has something to do with the antioxidants and circulation. So can what do you think about that? Well, I think blueberries are a fantastic choice because they have that dark blue color, and they're rich in the antioxidants, like you said. And what antioxidants do is you think about them as your little troop, like your fighters. They're fighting for your bodies, for your body's health, and they're protecting you. So the more antioxidants you have, the stronger your body is going to be. And that's a one very important thing is to keep adding foods that are rich in antioxidants because we have so much pollution in our yes. environment that our bodies need to fight so much more. And dark blueberries, cherries, you know, th fruits and vegetables with the dark pigment are yes. very, very important. Absolutely. Could you share with us? So blueberries are one, yes. right, that are high in yes. antioxidants. Yes. And you mentioned a couple others. What are, are there vegetables that are high in antioxidants? There are vegetables that are high in antioxidants, but not as much as berries. Okay. Berries are really the highest. Right. And also plums and prunes. Oh, and love I love both of them. <laughs> in America, people think, oh, prunes, you know, they kind of frown upon. But if you think in Europe and France, it's one of the key staples and desserts in the northern French region. They have desserts made out of dried plums, prunes. Right. And prunes are so, so important because they're loaded with antioxidants and actually more than blueberries. Right. So I really support the dark fruits. Not so much vegetables. Vegetables are very important for other things. Right. But fruits and berries are very important. Okay, that's important to know. Okay, so blueberries definitely yes. is a brain-boosting yes. food. Okay, so the second one, and it's the one that I love, and I know most people out there are going to love it as well, is dark chocolate. I love dark chocolate and I did read that it's supposed to increase our overall uh, focus and, and alertness for the most part. And they mentioned something in an article that I read about flavanol. Uh, can you comment on that? What do you think about dark chocolate? I'm hoping you're saying yes. So, Eat it. <laughs> so, there are a couple of things about dark chocolate that are good for you. First of all, it's dark. As I said before, the dark blueberries and plums and prunes the dark color, it just has a lot of antioxidants in that food. Right. So yes, definitely good for antioxidants. Now, chocolate has two other things that are working for it too. It is, it does have caffeine. So it creates a little bit more of a alertness. It wakes us up. And it also has magnesium. Oh. And magnesium relaxes us. So when you have something that perks you up and relaxes you at the same time, gives you energy and antioxidants, 
and it makes you feel good because it's tasty. Right. When we feel good, our bodies feel good. That's and true. And when our bodies feel good, we think better. We, you know, when you're relaxed, anybody asks you anything, you'll, you'll give them an answer. Right. But if you're frazzled and if you're stressed and you're running around, somebody asks you a simple thing, you can't even remember the answer. Absolutely. So I feel chocolate is a very good food because it relaxes you, it gives you energy, and it's high in antioxidants, but still in moderation because too much stimulation can have a negative effect. That's very true. So anything in moderation, and anything right? Anything in moderation. Any, right. Yeah, except for moderation. Don't moderate the moderation. <laughs> That's true. That's very true. Well, all of you out there, we actually have a special treat for you. Yes. Uh, Lena has agreed to make a special recipe for you. Uh, what if I told you that you can make brain-boosting brownies. And here, here's two things about that, is they require no oven. You don't have to bake them. And they can be made in less than five minutes. Am I right? Three minutes. Three minutes. Three minutes. So we will be back in a moment with a wonderful demonstration. So we are back. We are going to be making a fabulous recipe, brain-boosting brownies. So Alina, can you describe, I'm going to turn it over to you. What are the ingredients in this fabulous recipe that you have? So first of all, we have cacao. Uh -huh. We talked about cacao. So go ahead and put a cup right in the food processor. Okay. And we did talk about the benefits of this uh, yeah, already. So you already know why it's good. And this is raw cacao. It actually has fiber, zero sugar. And uh, this is the real deal. It actually is the cacao bean that is um, processed into flour. That's a good point because over the counter, it's not always like that. It's not cocoa, it's cacao. Ah, we there's look a difference. For the raw cacao. Okay. Right? So the next ingredient is walnuts, and walnuts looks like a brain. Ah. And it has. That's appropriate, brain boosting food. Exactly. Right? Exactly. That's why we have it in there. And this is high in omega 3s, which are also anti inflammatory. One other big thing about brain-boosting foods, you want to increase anti-inflammatory oh, foods. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. What are they? Walnuts. Right. Chia seeds. Uh -huh. And turmeric. Turmeric root, you can get it in capsules, you can get actual root. It's really, really high in anti-inflammatory properties. That's why in India, they have the least amount of people with Alzheimer's because a lot of their food has turmeric. That's very interesting. What foods is turmeric in? Curry. Curry. Curry, okay. Would have a lot of turmeric. So put that right in. Okay. So as you see, it's a very hard cooking process. Yes. Here. Yes. <laughs> very hard. Um, Especially for me. <laughs> we put a little bit of salt in our little heart-shaped spoon. So we have a lot of love and dates. Now I'll show you. This is a date that I opened myself. These are medjool dates. Very, very important to use medjool dates. First of all, they're high in fiber, high in minerals, and this is a good for you real sugar that's not processed. They have to ripen on the tree. So all of the nutrition goes in them. Oh, that's interesting. So this is a really good anti-inflammatory and um, a lot of antioxidants. Excellent. And very good for minerals. So put that right in. Okay. okay? Super right. easy. Now, this is a hard part. We're going to put the top. I have never used a food processor before in my life. So, so there's two buttons on and off. I can handle that. Okay. Okay. Wanna... Okay. So after a minute in uh -huh. the food processor, you open it up and okay. you get your brownie. Oh. Up like this. That's amazing. Now you know when you make a conventional brownie, you need eggs yes. so to bind the thing, right? To bind the brownie. We have dates to bind the brownie. You need flour. We have walnut flour that will make our walnuts. We need oil. Well, we have walnut oil. We need sugar. We have date sugar. And we need cacao. And we have cacao. So we have all of our bases covered. And now you can help me with the, you okay. have a glove and you just want to go like this. Don't want to ruin your manicure. Us ladies, we want to protect That's our manicures. That's very true. So then you just push it like this. Super easy, right? Yes, it is. It smells good too. It smells good. I mean, what more do you want? You have a little bit of sugar, a little bit of salt, mm -hmm. a little bit of fat. And you know, I tell people to have a good diet, you need to eat sugar, salt, and fat. Mm -hmm. But good for your sugar, good for your salt, good for your fat. That is true. Okay. And okay. then we have our saran wrap so that we don't have to do the dishes. How and I like that as well. How easy is that? Mm -hmm. You know, I used to be a businesswoman and I used to run marketing for a large catering company. So I didn't have time to cook and to do all the crazy healthy food because it was too time consuming. So I created food that is easy 
And good for you. That's great. Look at that. Doesn't look like oh, just like a brownie. Oh, that looks beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. And you cut it just like this. And the other good thing about this brownie, you cannot overdose on this brownie. It is so rich and satisfying, you can't eat the whole thing. You physically will be like, I'm done. I'm good. This is perfect. I'm satisfied. Right, right. Because your body knows exactly what it just enjoyed. Instead of food-like ingredients that your body goes, what was that? I'm not sure. Let me try it again because I don't, I'm not satisfied. I right, didn't get exactly. any nutrition. I didn't get any vitamins. So there you go. We're going to just have a little bite. Okay. Oh, I can't wait to try this. Perfect. Go ahead. Okay. Let's, so cheers to your health. Oh, no, cheers, cheers to you. Mm, oh, so that's so good. Mm, it's so good. Mm -hmm. mm. So I would imagine that this brownie, uh, well, first of all, let's comment. What, what are the, the bottom line with brain-boosting ingredients in this brownie? Cacao for the antioxidants. Yes. Minerals in the date and walnuts for anti-inflammatory. Excellent. So take inflammation out, bring, bring antioxidants and minerals in, and I can think better already. That is wonderful. So in the afternoon, instead of reaching for a can of soda or for a cup of coffee, this would be excellent. This is much better because it will give you that boost, that energy boost from the chocolate and the caffeine, uh -huh. give you a little bit of sugar, get your mental alertness because of the walnuts. This is like a magic, not, not magic brownie, but you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. it's a yes, exactly. Magical brownie. It absolutely is. So for all of you out there, what we're going to do while we're taking a seat, I'm going to pop the recipe up on the screen for you so that you can write it down. If you have any questions too, they can contact you absolutely, as well, right? Absolutely. Okay, perfect. An amazing demonstration. Thank you so much for doing that. You're that welcome. was a lot of fun. Uh, there's a couple other foods that I'm curious about and I'd like to, to discuss with you. How about cold water fatty fish, fish oil? I mean, we all have heard in the, in the news that we need to include fish oil, and there's a lot of hype about DHA. Can you comment on that for us? Sure. So DHA is one of the types of omega-3 fatty acids. There's EPA, there's DHA, and DHA is found in fish. Now, also you can find DHA in seaweed-derived omega-3 capsules. If you go in on Amazon.com, I bought them before. To me, I find that there is so much pollution, even in cold water, not just in oceans, you know, right. that the fish oil that we get may have harmful pollutants with the benefits of omega-3s. So I go for the DHA derived from sea vegetables that way you don't have the pollutants and you get the DHA omega-3. And the reason why you need it is for the anti-inflammatory properties. It's really good to fight the inflammation. And one way to find out if somebody has inflammation, actually, if a woman has a belly and nothing else, and yes. she's skinny, that means there's inflammation, there's stress-related weight gain, and DHA and omega-3s can help with that as well. So it's brain boosting and um, can help with weight reduction. That's amazing. That's, that's, that's very good information because fish do eat those plants that you're talking about. Am exactly, I correct in saying exactly. that? Exactly. Fish mm -hmm. eats sea vegetables, sea life, and that's how they get. Also, a lot of fish, um, like salmon, they have the pink color because one of particular um, sea vegetables that it gets, and you can get that um, as an extract called astroxanthin, but it's a different story. Oh, it's about it's, different, it's so many different That's another things. show in itself, yes. isn't it? Yes. <laughs> Okay, so that really solves a lot of the information that was floating through my brain with regards to, to fish oil. Another one that is a mystery to me, and I know a lot of our guests out there, is hemp seeds. Uh, can you describe how is hemp a brain-boosting food? Can you explain to us? Sure. So one of the, my favorite foods is hemp seeds. It is rich in protein, which is a building block, and we need protein. But hemp seeds are really rich in magnesium. And magnesium helps to balance cortisol that our bodies produce when we're stressed. And also when you are stressed and you have cortisol, that can create inflammation. And inflammation is the root cause of many diseases, including brain-related diseases like Alzheimer's. It, it relates to inflammation. So we talked about turmeric briefly. Turmeric lowers inflammation. 
and hemp seeds because of the magnesium they help fight the stress so you don't get stressed so you don't create inflammation does that make sense that makes absolute sense that's so interesting it yes. relaxes you and uh, I really recommend hemp the legal kind the right. kind you buy whole foods the hemp <laughs> right. seeds uh -huh. and just adding a few tablespoons to your smoothies to your salads especially when you're stressed and especially when you're going through anxieties and um, it will help calm you down and help soothe the stress so you don't have that inflammation in the body. Okay, that's wonderful. That's good information. So now I know more about hemp. Thank you very much. So I have, uh, you know, when you were looking at a meal, and I would love to get your input on what you think the perfect brain boosting meal would be. If you could tell, what, what, ing what, what foods would you add to that meal? So one, number one thing, well, okay, two things that I like to look at, two things. One is asking yourself, is my food hydrating? Because you want to keep yourself hydrated. It's very important to have fluids moving. It's important for the brain. When we're dehydrated, we cannot think, right? right? What foods are the most hydrating? Foods that are rich in water. So that's your fruits and vegetables. We talked about antioxidants. Antioxidants, you can tell by the color of the vegetables. So having a rainbow of different colors, purple cabbage, yellow peppers, red tomatoes, green cucumbers, orange peppers, having red radishes, red dishes, sprinkle some hemp seeds, add right. some walnuts, put some avocado. You know, that kind of beautiful brain-boosting meal is what you need because it is hydrating, it's high in antioxidants, and it, high, it is high in anti-inflammatory foods. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. You are a wealth of information. Like I said, you are an inspiration to thank all of you. us. I want to thank you for being here today with us. My thank pleasure. you. For those of you out there that have any questions about what we just talked about or want to contact Alina and really find out more about what she does, we have provided her contact information for you. If you have any questions, can they contact you, Absolutely. Alina? That's what I'm here for. That's why I do what I do to help people. So. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you again. We have talked today, we've talked straight, no fuss, about medical myths today. A funny thing happens, doesn't it? When we have those valid resources and education under our belt, fear and apprehension turn into something amazing, turns into confidence and optimism. It truly, truly is a beautiful thing. Think about what we learned today. We learned that chiropractic adjustments are effective for long-term headache relief. We learned that cognitive decline and memory loss does not have to happen as we age. We have learned that there is such a thing as brain-boosting foods. It's amazing. We truly are, like we talked about in the beginning, we truly are like sculptors, aren't we? We stand before each other a, a block of stone. Together, we can whittle away at those medical myths. We truly do have to make ourselves aware. We have a responsibility to be aware. But when we do chip away at those medical myths, oh, we uncover an amazing, amazing statue. As a sculptor, we can uh, uncover that amazing statue. And that statue is a healthy, beautiful you. So I would like to take this opportunity to thank you all for joining us for this program. A special thank you goes out to our guests that were on today. We would like to thank Dr. Randy Lorish, Dr. Kim Crawford, and the amazing Alina Z. We'd like to do a special uh, mention to today's program sponsor, Ms. Alexis Lawson, with Alexis Lawson Portrait Couture. She has dedicated her life to enhancing self-esteem in women nationwide with creative photography, and we thank her. So thank you all for being here. I hope you know that it is you that makes these programs possible, and we truly are grateful for you. Please feel free to contact us if you have any program suggestions at info at plumtalkwomen.com. Don't forget to visit us on our website at plumtalkwomen.com. Like us on Facebook. Until next time, this is Dr. Shelley Plum. Thank you.